It's Sean from Shindy School. I just released my Easy Drummer 3's Drums Tab course. It's a full curriculum for beginners just starting out all the way to advanced users. From simply defining features to advanced workflows so you can get your own custom drum tones from Tune Tracks Easy Drummer 3. There's 15 videos, over two hours of content. I zoom in and out of the screen so you can see the details and smaller text, and I'm on screen with you while you watch the course. So there is a presence of energy, momentum, and encouragement. Check out the reviews at shootyschool.com and consider picking up Shooty School's Drums Tab course and bring your Easy Drummer 3 skills to the next level. Check out a free video from the course. The link is down there in the description. Or come over to my YouTube channel, Shooty School, to get a vibe of my teaching and production styles. Rock on. If you're not watching live, waiting for this stream to start, and you're watching the restream, go ahead and fast forward to the five minute mark where I start the show. But before you do, here's some resources where you can go to get support or socialize about Tune Track stuff. On Facebook, there's the Tune Track Users Group. It's a great community. Jay Rock over there is great with keeping up to date on Tune Track's press releases and product announcements. There's also the Tune Track Easy Drummer Group on Facebook. It's it's easy drummer only and it's a fantastic place for beginners to go or if you want to hang out with me and get my support I have the shooty schools tune track speak easy Facebook group I show up there once a day I provide support and socialize and I also have a discord server Besides that, I do have a members program. There's two paid tiers. They're both really inexpensive where you can see either pre-release content or get exclusive content and support from me personally. Also keep in mind, the first Saturday of every month, I do this stream live. So subscribe so you can get into the chat. You can shoot questions at me. Sometimes the users in the chat dictate what happens in the stream. Sometimes I have some prepared content Anything goes, anything can happen. So hang out for another moment or two and we'll get this stream started.
What's up, everybody? Sean here from Shooty School. We are streaming live the first Saturday of every single month. So do tune in and we'll get your tune track workflow, your DAW workflow, your songwriter producing chops up. What's awesome and interesting and a milestone is I thought my 20K subscriber goal would be next month. But right now I'm at 19,995. That's five more subs. We'll have that by the time the stream ends, so may as well address it now. I ended up putting out two pretty good videos this month, so that bumped up my subscriber count more than I thought it was. So, hey, it's my 20,000 subscriber goal, so let me just talk about that for one minute real quick. It's been a long road, people. It's been a long road. Shooty School is almost 10 years old. In a couple months, Shooty School will be 10 years old. It took me about eight years to get my first 10,000 subs, and then after that, it took me about a year and a half. So, I just wanna take only one minute out of this stream to thank all the people that have ever checked out my free content and gone right to my site and gave me a donation. That is a huge help. Thank you so much. You know who you are, especially if you're watching today. Um, I also want to thank anyone who's head over to shootyschool.com and purchased one of my courses. When you purchase a course, that's money that actually goes into my pocket. And I can actually buy some food for my girls or now and then pay off a bill. So thank you so much for that. And to my members, whether it's Patreon or YouTube, you guys are the reason why I don't actually pay out of my pocket anymore. Pay money to deliver free tutorials to the public. You know, that cost me money for like eight years <laughs> because I'm passionate about it and I believe in it and I love to do it. Since I started my members programs, you're the reason why I don't lose money on shooty school anymore. My endeavor is to make it a business that's far off, but things are good, man. I'm not losing money anymore. Thank you so much. And lastly, to just my subscribers, uh, specifically the ones that comment on my videos, that like my videos, and share my videos. Um, that's the least you can do, but that's also so important that the YouTube algorithms would never show other people my content without you as well. So thank you so much, and thanks to my girls as well for just allowing me to put my free time into shooty school. So thank you, 20K, rock on. I need some music. Should have had that going. All right, what do we got? Oh, the chat's already past the fold, man. I love this. Uh, hopefully we got some people in here. David, welcome. Carrie, welcome. I don't remember a Carrie. Maybe it's the first time you hear Carrie. Let me know. Shane, are you waking up for me, buddy? Are you waking you up for music, me? music, I don't hear it. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. I'm, I just launched it. Um, I got my v v VLC player in the background, and, and I don't even know how to use this darn thing. Let me uh, extend it. Sorry, guys. So today's podcast is either going to be really kick-ass, because I'm in a hurry, so I'm going to cover a ton of stuff fast. Or it's, uh, it's going to be a nightmare, because I'm doing a double stream, because we got a guest on later, so I don't know if I'm going to crash my bandwidth, but I've got all green thumbs up over here on my uh, on my left side. So I think it's gonna be all good. All right, there's a little bit of audio. Thanks for the feedback, Anthony. It might just be the same song over and over again today, but I just wanna get this going. Shane, you woke up for me, man. I appreciate that, Edgar, Virginia. Edgar, welcome back, man. This is, what, this is, this is two in a row. David, I just said, what's up to David? Oh, Carrie's from Jersey, right right on. Tommy, what's up, dude? Oh, this is your first stream? I I mean, I know your uh, handle, so I know you're not new to shooty school, though. Welcome, Tommy. Patrick from Mexico. James, welcome back. James, you've been a regular lately from Portland, Oregon. Rock on. Good to see you, Braxel. Good to see you. Scott's here. All right, let me fly through this quick. Council of Giants, don't recognize. And thank you so much, Council, for being a member. I, I can see you joined recently. First stream, awesome. Sell Cal, rock on. I was in LA for 15 years. Mark from across the pond, dude. Good to see you back. Rich, what's up? I thought, oh, Edgar, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for that. 
I really appreciate that. And this is not your first donation, that is for sure. I really appreciate your support, man. Today's a good day. Yeah, Braxel, 10 years, man. It's It's been a hustle. Rocky, one of my number one supporters, uh, you don't see his donations on the screen, but he throws me a couple bucks on the side often, and it's really helpful, Rocky. You know I appreciate that. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Scott, did I say hi, hi to you yet? What's up, Scott? Peaches, what's up? All right, Gemini, what's up from Scotland? My last name's McPherson. I'm sure my American version of that name sounds totally off. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you, Rich. Braxel, thank you so much, man. I appreciate the five. It helps out a lot, guys. This I'm not hashing a paycheck after these streams. You know what I'm saying? Sean, welcome for your first time stream. Welcome. All you guys got to do is hit the subscribe button and I'll be at 20K. But I don't think the number updates in real time, so it's probably already 20K. Benitopia. I don't think I recognize your username or maybe you changed your name. Welcome to the stream. You, you've been a member for a while, so what's up, what's up? Awesome. Thomas Short. All right, let's get John. As always, my friend, thank you so much for the support and encouraging me and being such a polite guy. We finally met the other week. David's here. What's up, Canada? Canada is not dominating the chat as much as it used to. Uh, Derek hasn't been around. We had to get a couple Canadians, but at least uh, we're starting to uh, even up the odds. Harley Bob, good. All right, let's get going. Um, you can buy my course here. Anthony can plug the link. I won't spend any time on that. Here's what's interesting. The, the next Tune Track Core program to be released, I want it to be Easy Mix 3. You don't have to agree with me. I want it to be Easy Mix 3 because there's so much dust on Easy Mix 2. It's kind of starting to upset me, especially with monitor resolutions. And Tune Track typically releases new products um, the fourth month in the year. Easy Drummer came out in April. Easy Keys came out in April. So I'm hoping that um, Easy Mix 3 comes out, but something you never see is this right here. 25% off Superior Drummer 3 right now. So are they gonna do a core release next month? I don't know. If they do, is it gonna be Easy Mix 3? Or Superior Drama 4. I'm not I'm all about checking out Superior Drama 4. I mean, it's gonna be a giant, it's gonna be massive. But dang, do I wanna use Easy Mix, you know? So so I'm either way, I'm gonna go with the flow and rock and roll. But man, where's Easy Mix 3, guys? I mean, fuck, that's so old. Whoops, Anthony, we're gonna need the snare uh, swear jar today. I'm excited today. Um, anyway, so that's kind of there's been a ton of sales too, but we got 25% off Superior Drummer. It's, uh, is it a hundred bucks? What's, what's that make it? Is it a hundred bucks off? Instead of $3.99, it's $2.99. I mean, why would they do that? I'm not doing any Nostradamus stuff. I'm not predicting the future, but I'm highly suspicious. Anyway, look, my co-host, Anthony, the Sin Knight. He's fantastic. Anyone who's been to the stream before knows he saves the day for me all the time. He was helping me troubleshoot tech stuff yesterday, this morning. He's amazing. He does it just out of his heart. I'm not giving him any cash. So thank you so much, Anthony. Anthony's on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, just click on this link and hop over and uh, say what's up. Anthony is the Sinned Knight. That's his handle for his music career. Uh, does a lot of EDM, uh, vocal, video game related stuff. Similar similar field that I work in sometimes. So that's Anthony. Anthony, you're the best, man. I just love it when you're here, man. And at the end of this stream, we're going to talk with Ken Shock. And uh, if you never heard of him before, don't worry about that. You're going to hear him now. And I've known him for, I've known his playing for about 30 years. And maybe about 20 years ago, already being a fan of his growing up, uh, we met in LA and we developed a relationship and we talk here and there in quite in depth about drums. And I really think uh, those of you that are trying to up your drum game should listen to this guy's vocabulary and metaphors. I always have a huge grin on my face after talking to Ken Shock. So stick around. We're going to do that at the end. And 
That's about it. I changed the name of the stream almost last minute because um, I wanted to check out the new MIDI pack for the Organ Session EKX, and I I didn't even really read the description. I thought it was more soul gospel stuff, but it turns out that's like a classic rock MIDI pack. So I changed it from soul gospel to a hard rock organ stream, but that's only a small amount of what we're doing today. What I want to introduce to you guys today is a, a more of an advanced tutorial. And if you know my audition trick, which is my number one way to work as opposed to the bandmate or a grid editor and, and this and that, the first thing I do is I work on the grooves tab with the audition trick. Most of you that are that are not brand new know that. Today we're gonna do a, a dual audition trick and I'm gonna call it the speed dating trick or something like that. I'm gonna name it by the end of the episode, but we're speed dating with MIDI files, working lightning fast, checking out different variables and options, lightning fast. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's where, uh, what we're up to today. Man, am I ready to work? I feel a little anxious, man. 20K subs. I got one of my heroes coming in at the end of the stream. We're about to do uh, an advanced audition trick, the speed dating. MIDI, MIDI speed dating. There it is. Groove speed date, groove speed dating. Maybe we should call that MIDI speed dating or groove speed dating, one of those two. I'm about to do a trick that's not very rehearsed. Uh, I kinda uh, presented it about a year ago from an EDM format, but doing it with EDM was pretty easy. We're gonna do it with, you know, analog stuff, so. All right, let's cut the, oh, let me check chat and we'll get going. <clears throat> John, you are the best. Braxel, you rock. Edgar, welcome back. You're the best. You need 25 off Hitmaker. Hey, if Superior Drummer 4 does come out, at least um, the Superior Drummer 3 packs will be going on sale sooner or later. So that's one extra bonus. <clears throat> All right, we'll cut it. Do, do, oop, do, do. Rick, ka, ka, ka. How different is Easy Drummer 3? Um, it's uh, David Superior Drummer is more geared towards professional e-drummers and audio engineers. It's really endless with the features. It's missing a couple features that Easy Drummer 3 has, which I think, I don't predict the future, but it should be pretty obvious that those features will uh, piggyback over to Superior Drummer 4. It'll get bandmate. Yeah. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Roger, welcome. Welcome, welcome, Roger. First time here. I love to hear that. Anthony, how many people we got out there? I, I'm not, I've got so many streams going on, I don't even want to monitor the, the head count. I'm in Reaper. I've got a tune track template We're sitting set up. at 50 people. You say 50? Bandwidth cut out on you. I've got a tune track session template. Whatever I do right now. Yes, sir, 50. Oh, Man, what a great day. And David had sent you 20, by the way. You have to say it. thank did, you. Did I miss that? Did I scroll right by it? Oh, I did. It's right there. David, thank you so much. 20 bucks for 20K a day, man. David, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. And for all of you that, that uh, donated today or might donate, you know, just know that uh, I'm not going out, you know, blowing coke, drinking beers with this stuff, man. I'm paying the bills. You know what I'm saying? I really appreciate it so very much. Appreciate the support. Let's rock and roll. Doesn't matter what DAW you use, all the steps we'll do in Reaper today works in every DAW. One specific thing about Reaper is when I set up my templates, if you right click on a track with a virtual instrument on it and you go to track performance options, I have prevent anticipated effects selected. Let me see if I can get my, I'm trying to rehearse uh, my live zooming guys. So let me see if I can get it. It's right here. Oh, come on, you can do it, Sean. Oh, the key commands canceling the menu. All right, here we go. Now I don't even know where the heck I am. Crap, it's not a good start. Yeah, track performance options. If you, select prevent anticipated effects right there. Um, we hear easy drummer when we hear it as close to real time, dependent on your buffer as possible. But in Reaper, we don't see it in real time. And if you select that and you have a healthy enough computer, you will not see any visual lag. And that's why it's important 
for me, especially when I'm streaming live doing my tutorials, but it might bug the crap out of you if you're looking at little dots on the grid editor. You're like, why does that lag? That's why it lags right there because that's selected by default. Anyway, um, Easy Keys 2 came out with the Session Oregon Easy X, EKX, and I'm not going to cover it like that. We're just going to hear the sounds from it and work on music together. But if you're interested in that, here is yep. Here it is. Um, that video plus my We Will Rock You video. I mean, they for my channel size, those took off this month. I feel Probably. super grateful. Do do do. Uh, let's get back over here. So anyway, I'm going to use the session Oregon EKX today. <clears throat> And what else came out? I'm not going to go to the product page right now because I'm already getting distracted by multitasking. But they came out with a MIDI pack called Hard Rock Organ, Classic Rock Organ right here. So this MIDI pack is brand new. It came out a week after the Session Organ EKX. And they're obviously meant to uh, hold hands and fall in love for all of eternity. So... I'm going to check this out yet because I've only heard it for a few minutes last night. <laughs> That's why I changed the, the name of the stream from gospel to, to uh, classic rock because I wasn't paying attention. So we're going to check out this MIDI pack. So not only are we going to build songs and, and learn some techniques, but we can also hear some new products while we jam. Um, I'm not going to do my typical layout, which is normally... I open up my VST plugins as big as possible without covering the DAW's timeline so I can still navigate while I'm, you know, have a big uh, plugin screen in front of me. It's going to get a little messy today because we're going to be working with two or three tune, tra tune track products simultaneously. So it's going to get a little messy. Again, this is more of an advanced one today. And whether it clicks or not, or whether you, whether you decide whether this uh, tutorial today is valuable or not. Just remember you saw it. You, you know, when you get to a comfort level with your DAW and with your VSTs, you're going to start hitting a speed threshold. Why can't I work faster? Well, we're going to work fast, man. It's going to be, I mean, I'm going to talk at the same time. So work as fast as I can while presenting. Anyway, all of your uh, DAWs usually have some sort of pin knob on the actual plugin header. Reaper does right here. That's so when I select multiple plugins, they don't disappear. They can both hang out side by side. That's pretty important. Not doing easy bass yet. Uh, easy drummer. So since this is classic rock, I guess let's pull up the uh, classic rock um, Easy X. But um, don't feel like you're... It's actually a great um, Easy X, by the way. I think it's fantastic. It's got a freaking gong, man. But I mean... The Easy Drummer 3 core library's got you covered, man. It's that's insane. So don't feel left out. But the MIDI you won't have. Let's check out the classic rock drum MIDI too. So what is what is uh groove speed dating? Yeah. Groove speed dating, MIDI speed dating, groove speed dating. What is groove speed dating? So the regular audition trick is I'll just draw out a loop in my DAW. So here's a nine, to, I can count, come on. Here's an eight measure loop right here from nine to 17. And I'll, I'll enable loop. Two track products on average are eight measures long. They're MIDI files, they're grooves. So that's why I do an eight measure long um, loop in my DAW. And if I hit play in my DAW, we don't hear anything because there's no assets in the DAW. Gotcha. But the DAW is playing. That's step one. Um, since out of easy bass, easy keys, and easy drummer, the keys has the lead, has the most potential to be the lead. So let's lead with that. And since this is classic rock, there's a rock, classic rock progression preset. Let's just select that and see if that works. And inside the classic rock organ, MIDI pack for easy keys. We got a straight folder and a 6-8 folder. There's only one song in the 6-8 folder. I guess we're just overviewing it real quick. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. 
10 songs total. We're gonna stick with the 4-4. So when I check out MIDI packs, um, and I'm in a hurry, I'm not hanging out for six hours checking it out, but when I'm going through them, because I'm trying to work productively, I usually audition a verse file and a chorus file, and then I have a vibe of that song, and then I'll either decide to commit and spend more time on it, or I'll move to the next song. So let's just do that. And our DAW is at 120, but these songs are at different BPM, so I will select original tempo here. Let's see if this works since our DAW is playing at the same time. Pause my DAW. That's a cool test. Um, original tempo will still override the DAW audio while it's playing, while it's playing. So I'm gonna keep this playing because it's gonna come in handy in a minute, but we are at original tempo. I'm gonna choose original key as well. And let's check out a verse real quick. This is heavy hands. It definitely, this whole vibe reminds me of listening to my mom's records, late 80s and through the 90s. Oh, that was a pre-chorus, here's a chorus. I'm just gonna find a song we're gonna work with today, so kinda half checking out the product, but at the same time, we are scouting, we're trying to be productive. The next one, Psychedelic Touch, here's a verse. It's at 78. Let's hear that chorus. It's all professional stuff, but I want to hear a rhythm that <clears throat> inspires me because I want to work quick li live. That was psychedelic. Here's rock riff, which might be right up my alley since it just says riff. Here's the verse. It's at 109. That'll be easy to work with for me. Chorus. Definitely a chorus. Man, that... I feel like I'm putting a record on the player right now in eighth grade. Like, it sounds very familiar to me. Um, this one's called British Rock. It's definitely some statement themed MIDI, that's for sure. This is all right. Let's hear the chorus. Oh, that's a statement chorus right up, up, up. Let's do that. Let's use this at the song today and get rolling. What do I got? Got 35 minutes. Let's hear dark and heavy real quick since it says dark and heavy. Let me not put too much time in it. Anyway, is my DAW still going? Yes, my DAW is still running. That was an example of how I might smoke through a MIDI pack just to see if there's potential for my current mood. There is. I chose British rock. I buzzed through the verses and the choruses quickly to get a vibe. And now that I feel like British rock has a vibe, I'll uh, spend a little bit more time in detail and investigate further. Right now, the original audition trick, not the uh, groove speed dating trick, it's already enabled. It's already happening because I'm looping eight measures in my DAW. And all I have to do is play a groove. Let me sync tempos. This song's at 121. Let me put 121. Oh, we're already at 120. <laughs> all right. Whatever uh, song you chose, update the tempo in your DAW. Our DAW is playing. Now when we play a, a MIDI file, it won't start from the beginning of the MIDI file. It'll start in the middle of the MIDI file, depending on where our cursor is, our current time indicator, our playhead, and our DAW is. Right now we're approaching measure 13, so it should play this groove halfway through. Start right now. Here we go. It didn't. <laughs> Maybe because it's only four measures. No, it's eight. Let's see if it catches up right now.
What am I missing? Might be a brain fart day already. I might have missed a detail. Oh, you know what? I think something happened the other day. No, it's there. Follow host is on. Psh, is this going to end my stream today? Is Easy Drummer 3 cooperating today? Let's. All right. It's working in Easy Drummer. Edgar Price says click the MIDI block. Click the MIDI block. I mean, the MIDI block's right there. Follow host is enabled. No MIDI blocks are in play right now. That's why when I tested this last night, it's working perfect. I shouldn't actually have to do anything. It should just work. Just reload the instance of easy keys real quick because I'm not really sure what I did. There's no setup to this besides putting a loop point in your DAW, just in case you're glued to the screen, screen wondering what I'm doing. That's all it is. You set a loop point, you hit play. So, huh. Oh, all right. So it's working now. I mean, I just need to reload easy keys. Not sure what I did. Maybe Edgar had a point, but kind of under pressure going after what he was saying. If you're right, Edgar, feel free to bust my butt later, okay? So anyway, all I did was load an instance of Easy Keys. I got the organ, session organ, EKX, classic prog rock preset loaded up, and classic rock organ, and we were in British, and let's see now if it's working. It is. Technology, guys. Just glad that didn't turn into a bigger bug. All I had to do is reload Easy Keys, and it decided to work, so not sure what I was missing. So anyway... We're looping in our DAW. This playhead is going to tell where this MIDI file to play. So when I hit play, it won't start at the top. It'll start right in the middle because it's syncing with my loop point. That's the typical audition trick. It's absolutely amazing. It's a beautiful workflow. The speed dating is a bit different because sometimes, all right, all the time, most of the time, we all work differently. If I hear that, this easy keys lick, and I say I like that or I think I like that, you know, you might not really realize until you start putting the rhythm section to it already. And if I start dragging this down and then dragging this down and hearing it and then deleting it and dragging it up and dragging it down, right? You can see all these monotonous tasks of let me try this, let's hear it, and then let me match that with this, let's hear it, I don't like it, let's redo, 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 all that stuff. We're going to eliminate all the busy work. Since we are playback, uh, what do I call it? My audition tricks happening up here with eight measures. Both of these will sync at the same time right out of the Grooves tab search results area. This is in sync with my DAW, and this Grooves tab will also sync with my DAW. And instead of dragging that stuff down, listening to it, starting all over again, I mean, you can just click around. This is how fast we can work, people. So instead of me just clicking around, that's the point of the groove speed dating trick. I think that's what I'll call it. I don't think anyone's really going to be referencing it anyway. Here's how we can be effective with it. Let's, let's actually make a song. This is at 121. I'm looking for straight 4-4 four, four beats in the classic rock MIDI. This is at 113, 115, 116. So these grooves were performed in a ballpark tempo as that classic rock EKX song we're listening to. So let's just start here and see what happens and let's start with an intro. Um, my measure one in my song is starting at measure nine in my DAW. So 
Do any of these have an intro? Smokin' does. Let's check it out. Kind of works right out of the gate, doesn't it? I just switched the keyboard riff and I switched the drum riff because now I'm thinking I liked what I heard. But I don't know if that should be the first thing someone hears in the intro of the song. We got to start a little bit lower and this is a little lower right here. So let's grab this. Let's grab this. These both eight measures long. When I don't have my plugins full screen, I got them crushed and kind of trying to fit them on the same screen at the same time. That's when these, the column sort really comes in handy because I want to see measure numbers. I don't want to waste time with anything that's not four, eight or 16 measures. And I also want to work really fast. So I want to know the measure count right up front. So I just dragged the measure column over here so I can see it. I'm going to do it in easy keys as well. These columns are valuable. Uh, being able to move them around like this is very valuable. I feel like I, I can work closer. And you know what? Just by these numbers, I realize I need another one of these down here. Should we switch the riff? And build it? Yeah. Let's do that. So now I have eight measures over here, and I have eight measures over here of this of this beat. I want this to be half and half, so let me scoot that over. I already know that works because of the <laughs> groove speed dating trick. I committed all that those those uh, grooves to the song tracks in their respective plugins, and now let's just make sure they work. I'm playing right out of my DAW, and now we're finally hearing our. Uh, song tracks in our individual uh, tune track plugin instances. Mark, stop spoiling shit. <laughs> you know what? Since Mark just I just glanced over and Mark had the biggest paragraph, so I read it. That's two for the swear jar. Ah, right. Mark kind of spoiled something on me, but oh, whoa, Jord's here? What? That's I, This is Jord's first time. Bareface Cow It's one of my favorite guys. He and I are real active out there in the Toon Track communities, and it's often that I'm reading his posts and going back home and... and upping my workflow. So, Jordan, welcome, man. You're the best, dude. Jordan, check out the interview I have at the end of this if you have time, because I'm going to invite you on one of these days to talk about Mac workflows. So if you st stick around. Anyway, Mark, yeah, you spoiled it. So here's one really cool thing about the groove speed dating trick is you can audition files you don't own because you keep the audition happening in your Grooves tab search results area. So check this out. I actually don't know what MIDI packs I'm missing. What should we do this in? Well, there's more options in, in Easy Drummer, so let's do that. So let's say I this hard rock drum MIDI pack's not working out for me. And I want to know what else TuneTrack has to offer that I have not purchased yet. So I'll select Web Shop MIDI and I'll light up a stogie. I'll read a verse in the Bible. I'll roll a J. I'll just whatever, wherever your piece is at, you're going to want a little bit of patience because it's downloading, you know. It's kind of connecting us to a database probably with a million or two grooves in it. But when that thing wakes up, I can literally not just click play on a drum beat and listen to it and go, yeah, that's it. But I can use the speed dating trick or the regular audition trick. Either one works. And I can make sure that groove works in my production at that moment before I buy it. You can test it out. You can fully audition it. So when you select show web shop MIDI, which I have a video for it, but it's an easy, quick explanation, it will show me, all right, I got a ton of crap here. We go down to my regular add-on packs. There's no, oh, here they all are. Online add-on packs, all the ones with the, the blue little dot on it. I don't own this yet. And maybe AOR, well, that says ballads. American rock, that might be good for what we're doing. 
Anything else represent classic rock? Classic rock grooves. What are we working in right now? Oh, we're working in the classic rock EKX. So, all right, so let's check out classic rock grooves. So I select this. There's only one limitation is after you select the MIDI pack you want, it just dumps it into your search results area without organizing it. So you can use your sort columns to narrow the search down. You can still use your filters to narrow the search down, but you don't get folder hierarchies where you can listen to one complete song, the next complete song. So it's a small limitation, but all the other tools still work. I want a straight beat from the classic rock grooves. And I mean, I don't even know what, I, I'm just demoing this. I'm not trying to find a beat because I'm not gonna buy this right now, but let's just see what happens. Um, let me get my audition trick back up and running. Let's pretend we didn't do an intro yet, so I'll delete the intro. Audition tricks happening. We're looping, we hear easy keys. We're right now live previewing show web shop MIDI, and the only thing we're gonna hear is a very short delay before the MIDI file starts because it downloads at real time. Oh, you know what? Since it's an intro, uh, sorting by intensity might be beneficial right now. I don't own this MIDI yet, yet I can test it out in real time in my current production. Maybe I got producers yelling at me, dude, the song is due right now. We got to release, you know? take forever to figure out what MIDI pack in the world works unless you have this. What company has this? You know, not to bootlick too much on tune track, but it's freaking impressive. So thanks for spoiling that, Mark. Really appreciate it a lot. <laughs> Mark's the best. Mark, you've been so great to me, man. Uh, thank you for the, I think it was like a five the other week on Patreon, man. I did message you back. I don't know if you saw it. All right. So now that everything's, uh, you know, been explained, we have a regular audition trick, we have a speed dating audition trick, and we can also preview files we've never owned before. I got 20 minutes right now. Let's whip a track together real quick. Let's rock and roll. I just got a donation on the side in for 10. Thank you so much. I don't know if you want a name shout out, but I see it. And thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. All right, let me get the, let me select the song track and hit undo. And here's our intro back. Let's work on a verse. I'm going to readjust my audition point. Here's the next eight measures. Can I do math? Is it 17 to 25? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Yes. Basic math. Caveman stuff. My next loop of eight is up. Let's get a, a verse going now. I hit play in my DAW before I hit play in the Grooves tab search results area. Um, and let's get out of WebShop MIDI. I'll close it. Fantastic feature. I hope that was cool for you guys. I mean, it sure as hell beats just listening to file after file after file and using your imagination. No imagination needed. Does it work? Yes, it's working your song right now. Yes, take my money. Oh, and is it going to take a while to load up again? Yeah, shit. On the left side of the star, when you check out WebShop MIDI, there's a button you click on. It takes you right to the site of the product. You can just purchase it right there. So I didn't mean, I shouldn't have hit that button again. Anyway, we're in mid-tempo. Close WebShop MIDI. Classic rock. It's mid-tempo. All right, let's find a verse. Looks like, I mean, we got three songs to work with. Let's just hop in. Speed dating tricks up and running that fast, just because I know to loop eight measures in my DAW. Uh, maybe we should just go with that. Let's check out the verse in Ice and Snow. A little too progressive for the sustaining chords. Checking out the smooth song. I assume no one's complaining and the production's working today just fine. 
And right there we have a double time snare beat. That's not the vibe I'm looking for. There's such sustaining chords. Let's just get a backbeat under there. This one works. The kick drum's too busy. Let's grab it though. This is only four measures and this is eight measures. So I'm gonna drag this down twice. That's like why I like to see those measure numbers so I can just get the typical structure mathematics out of the way while I'm working and not realize it uh, moments from now. That's a good groove for this style, but um, the kick drum goes boom, 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 boom. And I think just entering the first verse of a song that's not like all out rocking, they're sustaining chords. I don't know if boom, boom is good. I, maybe boom, 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 boom. I think that'll be much better at the beginning of a story not to come in at just that one kick drum, just taking away that one kick drum out of the, out of the pattern. I think that'll do it. So I double clicked on the MIDI files I want to select. Actually, I want both of these at the same time. So I'm gonna select one whole control, select the other. And now I've got them both focused in the grid editor. Here it is, boom, 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 boom. I think I want boom, ka, boom, boom, ka, boom, ka, boom, boom, ka. So, for those of you, especially the tangent I'm about to go on with the channel with uh, grid editing, those of you that think this is, your moves have to be really big and broad and make a huge difference. In this case, just watch how easy it is to produce a beat. Let's listen to this one more time before I change it. This steady two kick drums. I think it's uh, eighth notes. I just want to take this guy away. If I take that second kick drum away, my opinion, and I might just be talking on my butt, but it makes the downbeat feel stronger when there's no hit after it. It makes it more of a statement hit. So boom, ka, boom, boom, ka, boom. Ka, boom, boom, ka, boom. Ka, boom, boom, ka. So you see what I did? I just removed that eighth note kick note here here, here. Now, let's hear if this matches the sustaining chords better. Uh, can we breathe a little more? Did we open up the pocket a little more, make it a little less stiff? And there's times for stiff, so I'm not dissing it. I'm just reacting to what I'm hearing from the keys and taking away a kick drum. It's totally different in my opinion. Now we have the two kicks. And I still don't like it. Maybe save that do do ka do do for verse two, or better than that, verse three before you end the song as you're coming down the mountain. That's when you start throwing some extra spices into the dish. You know, wait till people are used to the good taste before you start changing the recipe. Wait until they're looking for a change before you add a little extra. So I'm just gonna do that real quick since that's easy for me to identify. All right, first beat's done, and I wanted to build this out before I went to easy bass, but there's only so much time. So let me just get easy bass going up already. Let me kill this, bring up easy bass. Dude, I get a P already, what a pain in the butt. I'm gonna have to do a break, uh, you know, two minute break real soon. Anthony, I assume chat feedback's reasonably positive and we're not completely uh, having a horrible show today. Let me know. I'm on the drums and keys tab in Easy Bass. You are correct in that assumption. Everything uh, seems to be good. Though, let's see, do we have any question? Braxel says, can you use the feature that makes it so there's less kicks to go faster? I could have used edit pay, play style, Braxter. Braxel, my bad. Thanks for coming to the stream lately as well. I'm recognizing your name every time now. Um, I could have used edit play style, selected the kick drum and turned down the amount knob. Actually, valid question. I might have done that at first. Um, to get edit play style, you just select this little tiny arrow and it will launch it. Then I would select only the kick drum, go to the amount and turn it down but it doesn't necessarily know what kick drum hit you want to leave. So you might just try that real quick. 
see if you're happy with that shorthand producing. And in a lot of cases, especially with backbeat oriented grooves, it actually, if it doesn't do what you want, sometimes it'll get you close enough to where you're like, oh, I like that too. You know, if I was doing something more progressive, I might not go over to edit play style. But working with backbeats, I would have tried that first. So it's a good point. I assume that's what you were referencing. And if not, at least we all know now. So here's easy bass. And I dragged, I forget if I dragged the right thing. Let me get the intro over there. I dragged the intro keys into the drum and bass tab of easy bass. And what's fantastic about the audition trick and the, the groove speed dating trick is that it works even out of the drums and keys tab. So I'm gonna hit play in my DAW, hit play. Hard rock, now this is pretty soft. I don't know if I wanna rock preset. I'm playing the verse right now. I wanted to play the intro. <laughs> This is the reason why that sounded off. I just had the BS for five seconds out loud to figure it out. I didn't have the intro looped. Here we go. That's in key now. <laughs> Good. Uh, let me grab a tone. You know what? Gos gospel EBX is interesting because there's no pick articulation. It's fingers over the bridge or fingers over the neck or the mid part. And as you might know, if you play a stringed instrument, it's more brighter near the bridge and more scooped near the neck. Bridge position, it's called. No, bridge, yep, yeah, bridge position, neck. Let's do a, a neck position so it's not so bright. Oh, that softened it up in a way I wanted to hear right away. I don't know if I have time to do too much editing. And if I do, I don't want to do it on a simple thing like this. So let's just throw this in here. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Let's throw it in twice. Now we have an intro. We take off loop and hear this go into, uh, let's hear the intro and go into the verse. Now what we should do is what any person born in the 80s should do is we should pulse the bass with that quarter note. This is exactly what we should do. So let me start at measure 13. And let's make this an octave lower. Can it go an octave lower? I think it's out of range. No, no, we can. I forget the key command. I don't want to hit random key commands testing because I might change stuff in my jaw. Daw. So if I want to bring this down without fear of moving it left or right or nudging it, you can go to select your notes, go to select and transpose octave down. Yeah. And then I want to do quarter notes. So I'll zoom in here. You know what? I don't do easy bass often and now I've got about five or so minutes. Let's just, let's work in the easy bass grid editor for a couple minutes since I don't do it often. We have quarter note kick drums coming in as in when you bob your head, typically when you bob your head or when you tap your foot to music, those are quarter notes. And often, you know, drummers want to pulse on that, especially if they grew up in the eighties and uh, have hairspray on, right? It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, can you mute your mic for me for a minute? Cause I can hear you, the stream can't. Thank you. <laughs> You're going to distract me. Um, anyway, so I'm going to change my resolution to quarter note. And now this is a lot of clicking and dragging. I want quarter notes out of this melody right now. And I can just click this, and drag this here. And, and there's a lot of, and I want to move back and forth on these three buttons. That's going to take me a while. My wrist is going to be going whip, 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 whip. Here's where key commands come in. Numeric. No, not the numeric pad, but the one, two, and three keys on your keyboard after you've selected your grid editor, not the song track, but the grid editor, will toggle these tools. Watch one, two, three, one, two, three. You can see them changing. One, two, three, one, two, three. So 
So now I can work really fast. An arrow tool is going to move a note. A pencil tool will add a note. And what? I haven't thought about this in a while. I'm not sure where to incorporate scissor, and I don't really care. Cut. Maybe it's not a scissor tool. Maybe it's a cut tool like a word processor. Man, I got to watch my own videos. Used to split notes. Thank you. It's all right. It's a split tool. So I'm going to use my key commands and whip up quarter notes. I changed my resolution to quarter. So these vertical lines obey the note duration that I want to program. I'm actually holding control, clicking and dragging to replicate. I'm not sure the Mac key command, George's here. He might tell you, it might be like option shift, click drag or something like that. So I just want quarter notes, except right here, this changes on an eighth note. So let's leave that there. Maybe we'll just do quarter notes up top here like this. This doesn't need to be this busy. Not that it doesn't sound bad. We need a drum fill. All right, we did a little bit of grid editing. That actually was a lot easier than I thought. But the point to that was if we hear a pulsing four on the floor kick drum, which is really typical in epic intros. And I want the bass to follow that, the rhythm section, not all the time, but should be hanging out and connecting and doing their job, you know, holding that weight down. Let's just do a drum fill. I'm going to take a quick break because I have to pee and then we're going to bring on my special guest and I kind of have a speech about this. I think my guest is really important. It's fantastic, but we are just missing a transition on this drum fill. Let me start at 15 so we don't have to hear so much pre-roll. Let's get back on the grooves tab. Got some fills right here. That's a little busy. All right, how did I do my advanced fill workflow in, um, in my Metal Month series? I want to transition from measure 16 to 17, so let me loop 15 to 17. I'm going to do an advanced audition trick where I click play on a fill and then I click play on my song track. This isn't, I, I got a link to that video below in the description. If, if this looks confusing and happens too fast this is the fastest way to audition fills accurately. My loop's not on. Here we go. That fill might've worked. Ooh, oh, let's do that one. All right, let me take off loop and let's hear how that enters in the next section of the song. I was hoping to make it further in the song structure, but you know, the tasks were definitely accomplished. Um, we checked out some of the new um, classic rock organ MIDI that came out after the organ EKX and it's pretty darn cool. I'm convinced that that's there's good stuff in there and we heard a bit of it too so you kind of got an idea what that product is so that's one thing we did. Um, this groove speed dating trick that was introduced and it's an add-on to the regular audition trick and whether you're going to use it or not you know, maybe you could comment in the chat for me whether this is just my ego or whether this is a valid workflow, but that looks like insanely fast compared to the regular audition trick, which is already really fast and valuable. So I hope you dug that and check that out. And we finally spent a few moments in Easy Bass in the grid editor. So um, I got to do a quick break and then I'm going to line up our special guests. So don't go anywhere. Please like the stream, by the way. Um, if everyone hits the like button right now, it might encourage a couple extra, it might encourage YouTube to grab some strangers and reel them in. So I appreciate it. I'll be right back.
All right, so this dude, Ken Shock, I've known, I've known his playing for about 30 years, and I've actually known him probably somewhere around 20. So I was listening to a, ba a band, a hardcore band, an East Coast hardcore band called Candiria growing up and me just loving all that heavy, brutal stuff. And I was really getting into turning in from a rock star into a musician at this time. And Candiria hit me at the perfect time because... Um, not only is it, you know, in your face, yell into the mic band, but listen, listen beyond that. If you're not a metal player, I know a lot of my subs are not, and I know some of them are, so you really dig this because I'm going to show a clip of Ken before we get him on, but try to listen past what's on top of the mix because for me, my favorite metal is real straightforward. You know where to bang your head. You know where to project your energy. With Candiri, it's, it's fucked up. Um, they introduce, they as in Ken or whoever the main composers are, they really introduce a pocket underneath the craziness. And it's fluid. It's really unexpected. And that's the reason why it's a timeless band. Ken's a former drummer of this band, but um, this clip I'm about to play for you is probably, I don't know, 10 years old, 15 years old, something like that. It's still my favorite. And it's a great introduction just to show how progressive one can be when they're hearing crunching power chords. So here's Candaria. Here's a quick uh, sample of Ken Shock, and then we're going to get him on, and here's why Ken Shock is here. Ken Shock is here because most of my market is either amateur e-drummers or it's people wanting to produce their own drums that are not drummers. And I've been doing my best to take you on my path and share everything I have with you. But when you don't sit down and converse with a career professional drummer, especially one that speaks well with fantastic metaphors, you know, that in, your, your inspiration is just going to be you. You need inspiration from someone else. And we got to start talking to other drummers and being inspired by them. And if after this interview, maybe you'll be inspired, you start working, you might get to the next level just because you have different terms in your head, different encouragement in your head. So Hopefully I can get more guests on in the future, and I'm super psyched. But anyway, this is uh, just like 80 seconds of a song called Bleed by Candiria. And if you're a metalhead, you know, rock on. If you're not, you know, listen through the, the frosting and listen to the meat and potatoes of because this shit's fucking awesome. <laughs> Ken Shock, thanks so much for joining me, dude. I wish I heard uh, blood, not bleed. I said bleed, it's blood. I wish I heard blood because I would be like, let's fucking do this right now. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, blood will luckily, make your ears bleed if you listen too loud, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, luckily, I didn't hear it because I can kind of <laughs> keep my vibe and better absorb your energy. But um, chat, do welcome Ken Shock. Ken Shock, welcome to this stream. And his name What's is What's up, spelled everybody? His name is spelt below. It sounds like shock when I say it, but there's an L in there. So um, Anthony will put out Ken's social links. So do please check them out, especially his YouTube channel. Could use some subs, so get over there. Ken, how you feeling? And thanks so much for your time, dude. I'm feeling great, man. Thank you. 
I do. I am a little bit skewed in my position, so I'm actually looking the wrong way. The camera's actually here, so sorry about that. I don't uh, want to make well, anyone cross-eyed. Let me let me <laughs> reposition myself here. Well, I'm a tiny little dude on your screen, so if you like put down your left elbow hard, you'll crush me. <laughs> like that? <laughs> yeah, uh, close. Uh, yeah, so let's not do it. So anyway, you kind of understand my market because we've you, we've chatted about my channel a couple of times in the past. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of amateur e-drummers coming to my channel, but more so, I have a lot of songwriters and producers and uh, uh, the majority of them are already on their way with their instrument and with okay. their workflow and their DAW with their instrument. And a lot of them end up coming to me because they're realizing, shit, I don't have Ken Shock living next door on the block, nor do I have the cash to hire a dude like that. I need to produce drums on my own somehow. And then they end up with tune track if they're hanging out in my market. Mm. And it's hard to like get them from, you know, which way do I go to, wow, that sounds amazing. I'm producing drum parts. And I'm curious if you can metaphorically talk to me just for a minute, whether it's encouragement or whether it's things to do, whatever, whatever path you choose, you know, what's it like untangling, getting off your stringed instrument or your melodic instrument and trying to observe drums and how can you wrap your head around that as a, if that's even mm. a fair question? No, it's a great question. And because you identified two distinct markets like e-drummers, which are people who are physically playing drums, right? So there's a pathway of information that could be directed towards them. But then you have the non-drummer audience, which can't physically execute on a drum set. They have to recreate that from mind to computer. So one thing that I will say is central to both pathways of information is that you have to be in the mind frame or the mindset of a drummer, whether you're playing the drums or programming and doing even like, because I was checking out the stream before I jumped on and I found it very interesting. Sorry, I'm going a little bit on a digression here, but I think it's important. I think the key thing to notice for both markets is that when you just saw Sean a few minutes ago working on those drum tracks, he didn't just have what came up, listen to it and say, cool, let's go, moving on. He, he critically identified that there were issues with what was preset for him. And he made sure that, number one, he started tackling those issues right away. Uh, one of the big ones was the kick drum issue. And I agreed with him. Uh, that was way too much kick drum for that part, even. whether you Even if you want to keep it single kick throughout the whole song all the way into a third verse, nothing wrong with that. There's so much air and sustain out of those organ chords in that part. It's like there's no need to like bring other kick drums in there. Even I was almost even feeling like a doof ga doof ga doof ga doof doof ga and even that set a bunch of air up you know so coming back from my digression there really the mindset is being a drummer in your mind because even as a drummer myself another digression that i always found pretty ironic is that when i'm working on music so to the songwriters on this one I have that privilege and ability as a drummer to go to the next stage and actually execute drums. But when I'm actually programming ideas on drums before I go play them for real, I actually just program some of the simplest shit in the world because I don't have time to waste on being creative with a program. I know what I'm going to eventually do on a real drum set. So now going back to Sean here a few minutes ago when he was working with those drum tracks and he started diving into drum fills and stuff. That's a tricky part as a producer or a songwriter. As a person who's playing physical e-drums, you can put your heart and emotion into an expressive embellishment. But as a producer, songwriter, you know, I wouldn't say try to become the best drummer in the world, but even if you can like for a second, you're sitting there, right? You play keyboards or guitar there's already a physical rhythmic reality to your world. If you're playing a guitar, you're playing right here. If you're moving around your fretboard, you're moving in time. So there's rhythm in every instrument. So it's not like you have to go play a drum set, but if you're sitting there producing and songwriting and you're up to a part where you need to throw a drum fill in, maybe, you know, sit there on your desktop or wherever you are and just go like, 
and and play what you rhythmically think might be a good drum fill and then maybe try to emulate it because i mean i gotta say as even sean was going through those few ideas he did find one that wasn't bad but then it didn't finish off well and it's like you could drive yourself crazy trying to look for drum fills when you know and i know i'm digressing like crazy but even in the world of graphic design i think sometimes people try to like just lock into the computer now where it's like just go to a freaking sketch pad and draw the idea out real quick and this way you could visualize it nice and fast then take it to the next realm so as a songwriter you're not physically playing drums, but bang out a fill on your desktop and see if you like the flow and the rhythmic value of it. And if you say, hey, that's good, then start to emulate it in the DAW. Or if not, try another one. It's like so much easier. Even if you have a conga, a small little hand drum around, you can emulate drum fill ideas on that drum or that surface to get an idea of what will flow rhythmically when I'm embellishing as a drummer. Easy Drama 3 and Superior users, when it comes to programming your fills, Ken brought up the sketch pad. Exactly. There's Tap to Find, it, which is a feature you're not aware of, Ken, but bring up Tap to Find. Yeah, I don't use any of that program fake shit. <laughs> no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> Swear jar for Ken as well, Anthony. So, But if you can just draw out a real basic fill, drag that up to tap to find, and it will re-engage your search results. So that would be a beautiful thing. I don't mean to cut you off. And by the way, I asked oh, Ken not to watch. <laughs> He's keeping track. I asked, that was Anthony, by the way. Ken I could refrain then. I didn't know this was a censored show. <laughs> well, I was trying to censor myself too, but I dropped an F a couple F-bombs due to you. <laughs> But uh, I actually asked Ken not to watch the stream because I didn't want to critique, but luckily he gave me a thumbs up. So now my ego's a little glowing a little bit more. <laughs> but um, what I was, what was um, getting me excited about, because this isn't a scripted interview at all, but that's because I fucking trust Ken off the top of his head so much. He's such a, a spiritual dude. Um, but when you started mentioning, you know, you need to bring some sort of effort to the drums. We can't just let the software do it for us, or you're just going to get its template. And if your ears aren't tuned in, you don't even realize that those template things are going to sound off to educated music listeners. You know, a foundation of something needs to happen. And if, Ken, if you were at square one in thinking about drums, is there like a tangible foundation you might be able to get someone's that you would start a, someone down a path of? Is there something particular foundational you would cover first? Yeah. Don't, don't try to be a drummer. I don't think any musician wants to just be a player. There's a big difference. So, and that, and that's, that's no, that's no, you know, disrespect or disregard of being a player, but it is two completely different pathways of skill growth. You know, you can become an amazing musician and not be technically as good as many great players because you're focusing on different things. As a musician, you're trying to find a more creative, emotionally invested expressiveness behind your playing. Whereas as a player, you're trying to skillfully obtain all of the abilities out there on that instrument and in the pathway of doing that you're going to have to sacrifice your own personal emotional desire to play you know it's like you may grind out for a two months trying to learn you know say like i look at a lot of like grindcore blast beat drummers and as as admirable and as respectful as that skill is you're sacrificing a lot of your emotional time to do that. And I'm not saying you're not giving any emotional time, but it's just like, if I got to carve out an hour or an hour and a half a day of my overall practice time as a drummer to just work on speed development and speed training, that's not emotional work. That's cerebral. It's very task focused. It's, it's, it's very boring in a way, you know, from an emotional creative standpoint, it's all technical, you know, task driven stuff. So, when I was younger, personally, you know, that's that's kind of what happened to me right in my late teens. As I started to play guitar and stuff, I realized that drumming in its specific pathway is not for me. 
And as much as I admire all of the great players on the drums, I wanted to be more musical, more emotionally and creatively invested in what I do on the instrument. So it wasn't about playing drums. It was about being part of song creation, being part of music production through the foundational instrument of drums. You know, somebody else in it who plays guitar, it's like the same thing. I'm using guitar as the foundational instrument for expressing my desire as a songwriter and a musician. If that makes sense. Some people literally just play their instrument and have no desire to write music. They don't want to get involved in music production. They just want to play their instrument. That's a whole different thing. Good. You confirm what you were talking about with the last paragraph, which was perfect, because we haven't had this conversation yet, and I love picking your brain. And you're basically, uh, you're saying, pick between working out and lifting weights or doing something creative. Both are productive, and both mm -hmm. can be related to drums, for example. And you could balance the both in a way that, like, and that's kind of what I did, because when I realized I wanted to be more musical and stuff, I also didn't want to sacrifice my desire for certain complex challenges along the way as a drummer. You know, it wasn't like I was just, oh, now that I want to write songs, I just want to play 4-4 Pocket and never, you know, it wasn't that. It was like, now how do I take my desires as a rhythmist and a drummer and how much I want to achieve as a drummer, but formulate that in a way so that it never overly confuses the audience I'm trying to reach with this. Because I think that's always been a big thing, even you brought up Candiria before. We do play a lot of complex stuff, but one of the most important parts about us rhythmically was if we're going to, you know, go on tangents rhythmically, the, the key structure then to the arrangement is how do we resolve that back so that we don't keep taking our audience to a place of absolute confusion and chaos. We got to keep reeling them back. We got to make sure there's some way they could pulse with it even in some of the most, you know, because audiences can get tricked very easily. I'll never forget this one night, bro. I was on tour with Candiri and we were supporting Clutch. If anybody out there doesn't know the band Clutch, please go check them out. They're amazing. Love them. They've been around forever. Nothing like Candiria, and they're awesome. Go ahead. So they're playing and Clutch has this one song where there's this riff in 7-4. Well, they play all 7-8-5. You know, they, they, they're not in 4-4 all day long. No, they're and not. That's, that's the trick to clutch is they try to make odd time sound comfortable, but they don't. it's not always comfortable. Sorry, go ahead. I no, no, it's, it's great that you said that because that's exactly the point I'm trying to, to, to bring up is that creating a consistent pulse for your audience is, it's almost 100% to get it 100%, you know, listenable or movable once you leave 4-4, is not a guarantee. So to the Clutch thing, they have this one song and it's got the 7-4 vibe and it's not a very difficult 7-4 vibe. It's just, you know, JP is just... It's, he's kind of cueing you to each one, but because it's not 4 and it's 7... I'm watching, you know, I'm side stage chilling, jamming. I'm doing my thing. I'm jamming to the 7-8. I know how to move. But then I look out and right there in the front row is like a group of people. And you could see even on that almost as simple of a way to, you know, project a 7-4 groove as you can. And still there's audience members. As soon as it went back, they, they're going up instead of down and they got confused and they had to restart their headbang to try and go back to a downbeat instead of just letting that pulse keep taking them for the upbeat for seven until they went back to the downbeat again. Cause in seven, you'll go down and up and down and up, but you'll still pulse. So if you can vibe on the pulse and find that quarter note, even like you were saying before, Sean, it's like, that's where an audience is. It's in the quarter note. And if you're in the quarter note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, three, and you just let it happen naturally. Don't kill your pulse. And if you, you know, your head's going up for a few, that's all it's going to be. But don't lose your pulse. And I think a lot of people are so easily flustered by a change in pulse or an augmentation in the pulse that that's what's going to start to screw you up on how to really 
get ideas of what makes good rhythmic embellishment and even drum beats because not all drum beats are all backbeat and downbeat simple. It's like you got to learn about fractions and how to integrate accents and things in ways that different drummers will because every drummer is going to feel the in-between different. I don't know if you know who Bootsy Collins is. Of course. But he's one of the most famous funk bass players in the world. And uh, sorry, I had my arm on your head there again. But um, basically, when he talks about funk bass, he talks about the one. Boom. Three, four. Boom. And then it's all about you personally filling in the in-between in a way that creatively and emotionally justifies your desire. Because that's that's the key. That's That's where your uniqueness is. It's... Well, that's where your perception of what's going to work right for the song is. It's it's in the in-betweens, you know. Learn your pulse first. Found yourself in a pulse, the BPM. It's like you're writing a song, so you already know the BPM. That's your pulse. So from there, what are all the fractional breakdowns I could come up with? And then how does music integrate? Because counterpointing accents is important. If a riff is down. Da -da -da -da, you know, something simple like that. You could go -dun -ka -dun -dun -ka and syncopate, or you could go -dun -ka -dun -ka -dun -ka -dun -ka and backbeat, or -ka -dun -ka -dun -dun -ka and downbeat it. You know, there's many ways we can approach what the music is dictating. There's a drum beat in there. The music gets written, and you can hear what what rhythmically now as a drummer can I express to to complement that music, dude. Uh... My ego wanted to cut you off ten times, man. I mean, <laughs> you 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 covered so much territory, man. And I know uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I went no, off. So don't if you well, need to I break got, me down. Go for it. I I loved it, man. I just you know I'm just not sure what to cut you off at for the viewers, but uh, just to point out, a, let me just take one or two things of what I remembered that you just spurred it out. I'm looking forward to watching it again later. Um, when Ken's talking about maintaining a pulse and odd time signature. You know, when you add odd fractions together and they equal an even number, there's a good chance over a short period of time you can maintain a quarter note head bob even though you're not obeying it from a theory standpoint. Is that a way to recap what you just said, maybe? No, that's a good point. I mean, that was going back to the Candiria thing. One of the biggest things about when we would endeavor like odd times and things like that, or I would get... Um, into a polymeter situation. So if I would play, say, you know, a, an augmented feel and say five or even an eight while they're playing in seven, things like that, we would always, you know, or I would, you know, I was the one who would do the math and I would just be like, okay, here's the deal. If you're doing this and I'm doing this, let's just find, you know, the least common denominator. So just use seven and five, for example, if you're playing in seven and I'm playing in five, we all meet at 35. <laughs> All right, stop. Don't go any further with that. <laughs> and then we would write a riff to, Next to time resolve we get itself together. at a point at 35 so the downbeat is on a downbeat for the audience again. We got to save this one for like the fourth time you come back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, well, I, actually, to, to throw a more amateur response at what you just said, yeah. in Blood, if you guys want to watch it again, the last riff that's played, it's one of my most favorite riffs. And the guitars are going a little bit overboard with their staccato rhythms. You know, it's not ACDC. It's nuts and it's progressive. <laughs> and Ken's kick drum is not traditionally doubling that. It's Ken's kick drum actually responds to it like the guitars are a call and the kick is a response. And it's so fucking crazy, progressive and choppy, but it doesn't disturb you. Because Ken said, F let me just lay down the backbeat proper so people can continue to bob their head, even though there's a whole foundation of progressive music happening. He just decided to say, let me have my left arm uh, continue the backbeat. And then the audience st can still do this while the guitar is going, blah, 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 and while Ken's feet are doing this. So I, that that's just one thing you might want to check out from that video, whether you like it or not. It's like that moment in the song is so easy to enjoy because what's up front is a basic backbeat, but what is underneath it is hell, all hell breaking loose. So it's just an example of why you inspire me as you do things like that. Um, so people ask me all the time to help them break down odd time and to do more odd time stuff. But see, I don't, you know, I'm a 
producer songwriter that loves drums as his favorite instrument, but I'm not a career drummer. And you just talking about odd meter. I'm like, man, I wish you had, I had your language. And that is the point of me bringing Ken on is we're not going to make it further if we don't start listening to other people's vocabulary and other people's point of view. Because if I can get Ken to inject his metaphors and his enthusiasm, and I can maintain that, the next time I sit down and work, I might go to the next level in that moment, you know? Mm. So anyway, I, I, I appreciate it so much. I did want to dial it down a little bit because most of us are in the amateur realm. And once you start saying the number 35 while you're talking about time signatures, <laughs> I, 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 mean, I got to get a calculator. You know what I'm seven saying? Seven times five, five times seven. <laughs> they both equal 35, you know? Oh, um, so one thing you brought up earlier too, just a story I've never told um, my subs is, you know, I didn't grow up with a drum kit. Yes, yet drums are my most passionate instrument, and I believe I have, you know, at least a professional rhythm in my bones. And but I didn't grow up with a kit. I did grow up with a drum machine, but I wasn't performing on it. I was sequencing it with it. How I developed my inner uh, inner clock, as they call it, which conversation for another day, Ken. You're really good at that conversation. You've, he's taught me so many times with that. But how I developed my inner clock, as in how I went from not just memorizing where things should be hit, but feeling where they should be hit is a generic way to say it. I developed that sitting on the can, skipping class and, and mm. going into the bathroom. Not that you guys should skip class or procrastinating at work. I would go hide in the bathroom for 10 minutes when it's not busy, and I'd always tap on my knees and tap with my feet on the floor. And I did that so much instinctively because that's what I had to do without a cell phone in that year. By the time I got to a drum kit, I was like, oh, here we go. This is pretty cool, you know? And that's just how focused I was on myself when I was kind of rehearsing out, tapping on myself or in a classroom, tapping on my desk, but that only lasts so long when it pisses people off. So you made some sort of comment earlier this is why I say it, Ken, to back you up was whether you know what you want because your ability can't really perceive it, tap out a rough on your desk from a, a metaphor on a sketch pad in a sense and at least get the rough out there and that's and continue to do that and your sketch pad will just progress and progress over time. And, yeah, yeah, and you don't even it, have to yeah. tap it. On a on a desktop, I mean, a lot of you know these days, it's not that hard to acquire a drum pad where you've got to and just actually physically play it and go for it. You know, as a guitarist myself, not and not a great. I play guitar to write music, so I'm not a guitarist in that sense. But what I will say, if you think about this from this perspective, if you play guitar right while you're playing, tap your foot four on the floor, right. And then if I'm strumming, jin, 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 and I accent, like, you know, fret a little harder on the backbeat, jin, 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 and I'm four on the floor with my foot, you're actually playing a it's the same motions, jin, 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 you know, and you're sitting and then cha, cha, for the, you know, when you push further on the fret. So... Believe it or not, most musicians who aren't drummers have enough brain coordination already with the instrument they play that playing basic drums really shouldn't be that hard, where you should at least be able to use that, that foundational coordination with your instrument to start trying to at least feel yourself. I, I can't, it's, that's why I took up other instruments because I couldn't imagine what it felt. You, you can't, you can't imagine the feeling to then know how to really, and, and this is a really important thing because it applies to the drums as well. Music is, is laid out for you in the 12 notes. It's sequenced a certain way and chords are built all in that. And that's great and everything, but they all get expressed differently through each instrument because of the physical way you play it. So you won't know. It's like a lick on a guitar. And I'll never forget this in a keyboard interview once I was reading where uh, somebody wrote into the keyboard magazine and said, I'm so grateful for this magazine because I'm a saxophone player. So when I go through all of these different things that keyboardists do, I try to then learn them on my saxophone. And some of it is really hard because the fingering is so weird. And I think that's amazing because as we start to 
kind of get an idea of what an instrument is capable of. We also get an idea of what's not easy. And if I can digress for some of these guitarists out there that are doing drum programming in some of the progressive metal communities, it's like they're creating these situations that aren't just, you know, snap of the finger easy for some drummers. And some things are just downright like, you know, it's it's bringing a whole new age of drumming coordination. Um, there are a few drummers out there that are now starting to push this idea of four part limb independence to a place where you can really start to separate your brain work. But I'd be careful of that because again, that takes a lot of the emotional integrity out of the songwriting. And you hear that a lot in the modern metal music is like, technically it's wild as shit, but you know, musically and emotionally it's lacking a lot so Where's there's the a, i still value? feel there's a fine balance you know if you want to be more technical and more progressive as a songwriter player producer just be careful not to get so robotic and and unemotional that it has no connectivity at all that's all i would warn against let me back ken up just like 60 seconds and try and put a wrapper on something he said because we speak differently um, and maybe this might help you connect like me as an individual living in the house I do on my block. If I never left my house and met my neighbors, yet we all got together a year later, we would be introducing each other for the first time. It would be awkward. We would be putting on these false, you know, pretending you're happy, pretending you're knowing each other and, and, and say you had to go do a task. A task can be really hard to do. But if I left my house right now, the day I moved in and introduced myself to the neighbors and then continued to visit them and got to know them in the future, when we had a task to do together, it would probably happen very naturally, very efficiently. And, and the final product would actually be really good. So me being originally a guitarist, if I didn't venture out of guitar land into playing bass, into just tapping on keys and into really loving drums and being passionate about that, it would be really difficult for me to communicate with you on this YouTube channel since my YouTube channel has nothing to effing do with guitar, right? Yes, yes. So just to put a different wrapper on what Ken said in case you missed it. I didn't miss it. He was really clear to me, but I just wanted to give a different metaphor because even though you're committing everything you got to your favorite instrument, that's okay. But you're going to experience your favorite instrument differently when you pick up a different one. And man, you, you're going to go more places. But better than that, as singers, songwriters, and producers, you're going to have to be writing on other instruments besides your own. You're going to want to know what the F you're doing. So just go step by step into the shallow end of the pool. And eventually you'll be able to swim in the deep end, but you just got to start somewhere. No, I, I would say in today's, music world and i and i don't mean this in a disrespectful way you know i grew up at a time in the music industry where becoming a multi-instrumentalist was more of an anomaly but it did happen where now i think it's becoming more of a necessity you know the first big changeover was if you want to make it in the music industry you better learn how to record your own music which was something also that was starting to foundationally develop in my time frame, And I jumped on that stuff. I'm an engineer. I'm a producer. I am a songwriter. I'm a multi-instrumentalist. Like I'm one of the, the smaller percentage from that time frame, And I'm talking like uh, early 90s. That's when I kind of started diving into multi-instrumentation. But I played drums, you know, solely for many years. And that was my first instrument that I strictly focus on. I do believe in that. I think if you try to endeavor multi-instrumentation right from the start, you might blow yourself out of the industry in a year out of frustration or confusion. So I do think it's good to be foundationally built off of one instrument to start. Um, even as a producer, if you don't want to be a player, you know, cause I will say I started as a player, but then I became a musician. So anyway, I would say that, you know, get an idea, get an idea. As soon as you make that determination, I want to be a songwriter, producer like that, as opposed to just a player, start to get an idea of what's going to be the next instrument that's going to do it for me. Because if you're going to be a songwriter, 
even if you want to build songs out of drum beats, the next instrument still has to come after that. So start playing something. You know, if you like guitar, play guitar. You like keyboards, play keyboards. But start to think about what's going to be that second instrument I pick up to help me really become a great songwriter. Because I just, we're at that point now. I, I don't think a young musician coming up in today's market is going to have any chance if they don't start to explore the self-engineering route and the multi-instrumentalist route. That's the new generation of musicians. They're playing multi-instruments. They're writing their own shit. They're recording their own stuff. It's all fully encompassed within one brain, which is great from a creative foundation. But I do hope these people branch out and hire other musicians to bring other emotion and other thoughts into the, uh, into the artwork. But from a found, sorry, I just want to complete that no, thought from a foundational good. standpoint. Yes. If, if you're the age of 15 to 25 and you're not playing another instrument or learning how to record your own music, you're, you're on the, the bad side of it. And, In comparison and, to when I was growing up, that was an anomaly, but now it's pretty regular. You got to do it all now. Sure. I mean, that's how fast paced. The world is and that's where yeah. technology is at and i'm glad you went on that tangent because i've never said that on this channel and that needs to be said on this channel so I yes i mean that. this is a a music writing you know dow intensive type of channel so anyone out there if, if you're a player but you're more you're finding that that greater interest to endeavor songwriting production and stuff and you're just playing one instrument, yeah, then now's the time. Get onto another instrument. I'd honestly recommend keyboards only because you could get a MIDI keyboard, pop it in, get some like virtual synths and stuff, and you could emulate other instruments to some degree writing music and then That's always get point. another guitarist or a bass player later. Sure, and you can trigger your drums with it. Yes, you can. So, uh, I've got a mini keyboard right in front of me. It's about this long. I have a uh, 12 square drum pad, and then I have a small mixer MIDI. So I've got it all in front of me, condensed. And then when I sit down for a serious production, I go pull out my full length keyboard. And I'm not a keyboardist, but I have rhythm and I can apply it to white and black keys. I have basic music theory down so I can visualize Almost to what Ken was talking about with getting the sketch of drum fills out, that's how I get the sketch of melodies and mm -hmm. chords out. I know enough to get the idea down, and once I get that into my DAW, then I can uh, have the time to craft it and produce yeah. it into what we want. Yeah. Dude, uh, yeah. dude, thank you so much. We we went over already. Um, I'm going to have you back regardless if the chat likes Please you Please do. Or not, I'd but... love to. <laughs> Dude, I love you, chat. Say bye to Ken. Ken, thank you so much, man, for doing this. Anthony, plug, please plug Ken's links. Chat, please hop over to Ken Shock's uh, YouTube page and give it a sub. And but he isn't actually more active on Instagram. So if you're, am I correct, Ken? Um, I I kind of like duped the the Instagram content over to YouTube oh, yeah. Shorts. That's but actually, my you YouTube didn't... content is more like five to ten minute videos. I try to get those done, but I'm not a what you would call a a force fed content creator. I want <laughs> if I'm dropping content, I want it to be a long lasting video, not something that's good for a week and then it's a useless video. Good, you know those are I and I have again again no disrespect to those content creators. It's just I'm not into a, a fast food content market i'm more into you know long lasting so like the yeah, last well, video i just put up is a deep dive in how to set up snare wires on a snare drum. i saw that too because that's a uh, big 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 issue with a lot of drummers they get crappy snare drum sounds all and that's going to be the biggest reason why snare snare wire setup is so important uh, but you drum start programmers another don't conversation. have to worry about that well uh <laughs> Actually, but, uh, but my, man, wait, my wait, wait, I gotta say though, that snare drum yeah. sound in that in the in the stream you were using, it was a crappy snare drum sound, and that's why I have <laughs> fifteen snare drums behind me because you never know what type of snare drum sound you're gonna need for a song. So sure. change well, that snare drum sound out. <clears throat> my members. <laughs> My members that watch exclusive videos know we do pay attention to the bottom snares on a snare drum because the vibrations from the entire kit trigger it a hundred percent of the time if you're playing. So uh -huh. we know a little. We know a little bit about it, Ken. Oh, you uh, know what? You were talking about that the other day with the crosstalk. 
Oh, well, we, yep. A slightly different conversation, but very similar. You know, when you play, fuck, we're going to go into another conversation. No, 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 right. no, no, no. Because no. <laughs> I got to go too, but. I know, I'm ready, dude. Thank you so much for your time, man. Everybody, uh, thank Ken. Um, I want him back as, I mean, I, if you guys even remotely have the same opinion as I do, like I feel energized after hearing, you know, a career drummer with such great energy speak like that. It's like, I can't wait to get to work. So thank you so much, Ken. And I hope to chat with you soon, man. Rock, your pleasure, camera's man. over here. Rock on. Thank you so much, man. All right, Sean. Take care, brother. Peace. Peace. All right. I hope you guys dug Ken Shock, man. I can't get enough of the dude. It's, uh, you know, is he my hero? Is he my buddy? I can't tell. You know, I just, I love that. I love that. And I don't know, has chat been firing off today? I hope it, I hope it has been. It looks busy. Um, as you guys know, when I do a busy stream, I don't get chat to chat real time. Um, but I usually watch it a couple days later. So I at least understand what's going on, whether it's feedback or whether it's a particular question. And I do my best to dodge and move from there, you know, so. Dude, it was cool to see George. George's still here, man. It's cool to see you here today, George. Uh, Anthony, did I miss a donation? Because I need to shout that out if I did. It looks like no. Oh, here's something. Captain Cran, thank you so much for the two. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Anthony gave me money. <laughs> Anthony, I don't even pay you. Stop. Stop giving me money. Thank you. Is that from... My chat's not going up any further. I guess uh, it's a little bit limited. All right. Saw a lot of familiar faces today. Um, do I we have to get your attention and then you clicked off the screen. <laughs> um, did, how many people did we have during Ken? Did we still have at least like, what, 30 people, 40 people for Ken? Do you recall? I hope you guys come back to me next month. We capped at about 52, and then it started to drop slowly about an hour ago. Awesome. All right. That's a fantastic, fantastic. Well, I hope you all come and join me next Saturday if you're available. And, you know, I want to get guests on. I want to, I mean, I can do a lot. I've been taking you guys on my ride for a long time, especially my regulars. But, you know, I need inspiration and encouragement too. But, you know, I say a lot of, of the same things in the same way that I think are really good, but when they're defined with different vocabulary and different phrasing, they can stick to different people. So that I need to get other people in here chatting with you guys. And I just loved Ken Hap hopping on. I hope you guys did too. So uh, I wanna take a nap, but I gotta go to work first. I gotta keep the hustle going. It's my marathon Saturday. Anthony, you are the best, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the donations, guys. You know who you are. I'm running short on time to scroll back up and shout them out. I shouted out to you earlier. And, um, oh, and my members, if you're um, a uh, firm handshake member, no, if you're a next level member, I'm gonna put out a new video just for you right now, the second I hit stop. So check it out if you wish. Thank you so much, guys. Rock on, peace.